Uh, one of the more popular areas for Sacred Heart University over the last 10 years has been the growth of our club sports programs. And to talk a little bit more about the club sports opportunities here at Sacred Heart is the director of club sports, Ray Mencio. How are you, Ray? Phenomenal, Rob. Glad to be here with you. All right. Uh, so, Ray, uh, you took over the program uh, just about 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in that time, can you talk about uh, the growth of the program and how it fits on uh, campus here at Sacred Heart? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the unique things that we have as, as a program is really when we started, there was no club sports department. It was just a few organizations that were men's and women's rugby, uh, the dance team, club baseball just started off. We really only had four sports, but there was a growth there where we wanted to include more students and give students the opportunity to play and compete mm -hmm. at a sport. You know, maybe they love Sacred Heart because it was a beautiful campus, but they weren't a Division One caliber athlete or they didn't feel like they could commit the time to a Division One program and they still wanted to compete. Yeah. And we went from four sports and about 150 students to the next year having 16 sports and over 400 athletes to this year where we have 35 sports and over a thousand club sports student athletes. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, can you quickly just explain the difference between our varsity division one club sports and then also intramurals? Absolutely. So in a varsity level sport, you know, you're going to have a large commitment. You know, there is no real off season. You're going to have a commitment to practicing, playing, and it, there is a big piece of responsibility and you are representing the school. Um, a lot of students, you know, they'll get, you know, uh, scholarships, some are walk-ons, but there is still that same level of commitment no matter who you are. And there's also a commitment in the classroom and doing study hall hours. Okay. Club sports is going to be a lot less of a commitment and the competition level is obviously not going to be as high. Typically teams are going to practice anywhere between two and four times a week. Games and practices, you know, games, excuse me, games are always on the weekends. Yeah. Practices are usually during the week. So really should never interfere with class. Class is always going to be your number one priority. We don't tell anyone they should make their class schedule around their club sports practice schedule or a game schedule. And But you do have coaches. Yeah. You do have an athletic trainer. So there is a level of competition. And we like to equate ourselves to, you know, a, a Division two or Division three program for most of our sports. And that's the kind of caliber athlete we have. And intramurals is really Sacred Heart students playing and competing against Sacred Heart students on our campus in the Valentine Recreation Center. Okay. Um, let's talk a, about the process of becoming a club sport athlete. So if a student's out there saying, you know, this is something I really want to do, or maybe gets to campus and realizes that they want to be in club sports, what's that process? You know, the first thing I always tell everybody is to make sure you're in contact with the coaches. And now is even a great time to go onto our website, which is just sacredheartclubsports.com, reach out to the coach for the team, mm -hmm. and tell them that you're interested. And okay. you can find out a little bit more about the schedule, you know, how the team did this year, how the team's done in the past. And you can even ask to speak with a current student on the team so that you could get their perception of how things are going. As soon as you get to campus, we will send out emails, and hopefully the coaches will be in contact with all the incoming students, you know, before they even arrive on okay. campus. But once you get on campus, if you've missed those emails or you decide, you know, you want to try a new sport, maybe you decided that you wanted to try gymnastics after you'd never done it before, or you want to try cheer after you've never done it before. You know, there's always those opportunities. So what we'll do is we'll have a meeting for each individual team to kind of lay out the groundwork of everything you need to do to, you know, from your athletic training forms to any signing up on Do Sports Easy and kind of giving you the idea of what is to kind of come over the next, you know, uh, really could be two months, it could be the next eight months, you know, depending on the team and when their season starts. But <clears throat> we want to make sure we have that opportunity for everybody to try and, you know, even if you, you know, you decide in September you want to try something new, there's going to be that time. All right. Um, can you talk about some <clears throat> of the uh, sports uh, that are unique to Sacred Heart? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, as, we, as I mentioned, we have 35 different sports. So, okay. you know, while we do have your traditional baseball, basketball, um, soccer, softball, we also have figure skating, which has gone to the national championship the last two years. Our dance team has uh, competes every single year in Daytona. Um, they finished as high as fourth in the nation before. Mm -hmm. We also just started a chess team this year. So we also have an eSports. eSports has had a ton of success, and uh, hopefully we're going to continue to grow that program. Yeah. Um, but there are a lot of unique sports. You know, we've started badminton and dodgeball and climbing because of the climbing wall in the Valentine Center. And, you know, 
we're always open to starting new things as well. So, you know, coming down the pike, we definitely will be adding some sports. But, you know, for, you know, definitely for anyone's interested, the best way to take a look at all of our sports is just going to our website and checking out, you know, when you hit the Teams link, yeah. it comes to a drop down menu. You could click on anything you want to try. Okay. Um, you, uh, uh, you just mentioned a minute ago about uh, some of the success that the teams have had. Um, I know some of your teams have even gone on to national championships. Yep. Can you talk a little bit about uh, that success over the last couple of years? Absolutely. Our club football team won a national championship in 2017. It was, um, you know, our in every year since we've basically been to the national championship playoffs. So, you know, we've had a lot of success with that program. The dance team, gymnastics, figure skating, softball, we've all have gone to national championships. Mm -hmm. um, men's soccer went to their first regional championship this year in Pennsylvania. So every year we've had a minimum of five teams competing at a national championship level. And typically we get about eight to 12 who are gonna make at least regional or divisional championships. So okay. our teams have had a lot of success. Can you talk about some of the schools that um, you can end up playing? Yeah. Uh, I know it varies by sport, yeah. but what are some of the named schools that we uh, compete against? The, one of the cool things is that when we started the program, you know, 10 plus years ago now, I used to every, tell everybody that we would compete basically from maybe New Hampshire to maybe Delaware, Maryland area. Yeah. And now we're kind of global. You know, rugby went to Ireland uh, two years ago. Um, and, you know, I kind of mentioned some of those other programs where figure skating was in Colorado two, last two years ago. This year the national championship was in Minnesota. Okay. Um, so we do go to those places. But our frequent opponents, we are playing usually bigger schools. So we're playing against UConn and Rutgers and... Um, even some local schools like Quinnipiac and New Haven, um, but pretty much any university we've probably in the Northeast, we've probably played them in some sport. But you know, again, you, we see the UConns of the world a lot: Boston College, Boston University, Northeastern. So we kind of hit up all those areas. How many students right now would you say are currently involved in uh, club sports? We have probably over, we have over a thousand students that are current Sacred Heart students who are involved in club sports this year. Okay. And we expect that number to continue to grow. Um, is there a uh, tryout process? Is there a walk-on process for club sports? How does that work? That's a great question. Um, <clears throat> while we don't really ever want to cut people from teams, a lot of times our leagues, depending on the sport, will restrict the number of people that can be on the league roster. So okay. what we do in those sports is that we might have a tryout, but it's going to be based upon kind of where you might fall, whether you're on the roster, whether you're on a practice squad, whether you're on a second team. So, you know, we don't typically like want to cut people, but we do have tryouts where we also might have a travel roster. So yeah. there's a bunch of variables that kind of take place um, right when the sport starts. And, you know, again, that shouldn't dissuade anyone from trying out and participating because you might have a hidden talent you didn't know about. All right. Um, are there any costs associated with club sports? Yes, most of our teams have dues. Um, we keep dues extremely low in comparison to everyone else. It's just really to help defray some of the cost of um, equipment, transportation, and whatnot. The university picks up uh, about 85% of the cost. The remaining 15% is usually between fundraising and dues. Some of our teams don't pay dues and in lieu of dues that they fundraise extra money. So okay. there is a small cost. Generally, um, it's under hundred dollars for a team. Okay. Um, you know, students uh, and parents sometimes ask and want to know what's the transportation situation from campus to games? How does that work? It's, it's a great question. We, a lot of the times for farther events, we'll, we'll get buses. Okay. <clears throat> um, you know, just like you would if you were, you know, a, a varsity team and, and, you know, if we're traveling to uh, Philadelphia will probably get a bus for for the team if there's a local competition generally the students will carpool um, and kind of by that measure you know it, it's for local things mm -hmm. and if it's kind of beyond that a lot of times we'll <coughs> rent vans from uh, Enterprise who we have an agreement with so we rent vans and the team will take uh, you know a couple of mini vans as needed to their competitions okay um, this past August uh, we had a really great um, opportunity to open up a new facility on our campus, which was uh, coming for a long time. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the Bobby Valentine Health and Recreation Center? Absolutely. I think that it was something that our campus uh, desperately needed. You know, our students kind of craved it was having a recreation facility on campus mm -hmm. where they can go and do a variety of things. And our facility is pretty unique in the fact that 
we have a lot of things that other campuses don't have, one of which is a six lane bowling alley. Um, you know, that's where our women's varsity program practices, our men's club team practices there as well. And we also have it open every single day of the week for general student use. Okay. Typically it's at night. We also have a rock wall, <clears throat> which if you pull up on campus, you can see the rock wall kind of in all its glory in the front of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have um, a basket, large basketball court where our men's and women's club basketball teams play their home games. It's where our club teams practice and our intramurals occur. And we also have a state-of-the-art facility in, um, you know, in terms of equipment and treadmills and workout equipment. Uh, we also have an athletic training room for both, one for club sports and one for the vars some varsity programs that are also utilize the building. Okay. So there's a lot of uh, unique things within that the facility, and um, it gets a lot of use. You know, on a typical day, we have close to 800 uh, students, graduate or undergraduate, come through and use it. The last question uh, is in, in going back to getting ready to come in, uh, what type of forms um, should students be expected to submit uh, prior uh, to a season starting? Great. They are, uh, Do Sports Easy is, which you'll be able to find the link on our website, okay. will have the instructions of how to start registering for a sport and then it'll take you to another website which is called Sportswear. Sportswear is for all of our athletic training paperwork. And okay. Everything's electronic now, so the only thing that you're required to actually upload would be um, the physical signed off by a doctor. And physicals are good for two years, and um, so you can, it has to say, it's, you know, you're cleared for sports, but it'll have you fill out a bunch of other questions, again, electronically, and then just upload uh, the physical, and then you're good to go. And then within, you know, about two to three weeks, you know, the athletic trainers will go through all the paperwork, make sure everything's in order, and if they have any questions, they'll definitely reach out to you. Okay. So uh, one of the things that you should get involved with at Sacred Heart if you have the ability or the passion for is club sports. Uh, whether or not you're thinking about Division I club and intramurals, those are all things that you can uh, find out by talking to our staff. And then for those of you coming to Sacred Heart in the near future, you'll be able to meet with these, these uh, areas at orientation as well. But you can visit the websites uh, that will be listed on the bottom of our screen right here uh, to find, it for more, um, find out more information about uh, all these programs. We thank uh, Ray Mencio, Director of Club Sports, for joining us today, and we hope to see you on campus soon. Thank you.